Hello everyone. Uh, how many of you attended my classes earlier? Few of you, okay. How many of you have uh, given prelims earlier? Some of you. Don't feel shy in saying that I have given prelims earlier. Okay. So, prelims is the difficult part of this examination. Anyways, for uh, those who do not know me, so I am your Sudeep sir, teaching polity and governance. So, people generally when they prepare for uh, civil services examination, when you see too many of uh, toppers interviews and the other things, especially these days in YouTube, too much of uh, mock interviews that are happening you see. With that, many of them start dreaming ki, what if I am also there? I am facing an interview panel. Okay, if that question is asked me, why can't I answer? These all dreams you have, which is, which, is, which is good. That is how you must start your preparation with. In your imagination, in your dreams and all, when you are thinking, when I am at that stage, how I will be performing, how well will I answer, what is my profile, that all is very good. The issue is, when you have to start working, you have to work properly for preliminary examination first. Otherwise, you won't realize that dream of yours. To dream is good, okay, nothing wrong with that, but most hard work you are putting when you are actually preparing for your prelim examination. And when you are actually doing your prelim examination is when you learn about the subject the most. Main examination is not just about content is important at the same time there are other aspects which come to main examination. Especially answer writing, the answer writing part and all you should be very good with in main examination. Preliminary examination is also a skill of its own. How can you say it is a skill of its own? Many people uh, say that prelims means it is the same. You prepare for one, you know, you should have an integrated approach, which is true. To a large extent, it is true. But three months before prelim examination, four months before prelim examination, dedication to prelims and prelim specific preparation is very, very important. If you see any of your toppers, so called toppers or not even not necessarily toppers, others also when it comes to prelims, some you must have observed every year they get very good marks in prelims. Always like if the cutoff is somewhere near 100, they are already near 120, 125 plus and every year they are like that and few students, few students are always near cutoff. I am always near, you know, if the cutoff is 100, you will be 99. If the cutoff is 95, you will be 94. If the cutoff is 110, you are near 108. So, either they are here or if they are lucky, they will fall that side of the wall. And there is a large chunk who are there near the cutoff. And of course, there is another large chunk of uh, students who fall below the cutoff. So, the traits of uh, successful people, especially in prelims, we do not know whether they will pass in mains or that is another ball game. That is of course another game, you have to be good with uh, your optional, you have to be good with uh, essay and everything you have to good, be good with when it comes to main examination, scoring good marks in main examination. But prelim specifics, there are toppers in prelim specific examination also. Of course, their names would not be put on the list or anywhere ki he is the prelim stopper, she is the prelim stopper. But if you see only prelims like one examination and in that why can't you be a topper? That should be the question in your minds right now. Because if you if you are there, then main examination should be very easy, kind of you, you are at peace with respect to main examination because one additional month you will get. Because after prelim examination, most of them wait until one month. They waste one month in the anticipation of result, whether I will clear prelims or I won't clear prelims. Most, most students waste it, almost 95 percent of the students waste one month after prelim examination, whether I will clear cutoff or not, 
especially those who are very close to cut off those who already lost hope ho gaya next saal we'll see but those who are maybe five marks that side maybe five marks this side so in their mind the biggest issue is what should i do right now so they can't study even if their friends say don't waste time study now if you clear the main examination if you clear the prelims then you only have 3 months so in this 3 months you should do well so though you say but when you open the books you are, will be still thinking of cut off what will happen i wish and and their favorite past time is to engage in debates about the prelims question paper there are always some questions which are like ambiguous maybe b is correct or c is correct so they engage in debates in online fora so they come there or with their friends they said i think b is only correct and they search all the books which want to justify their answer maybe b is the correct answer and they want to keep on justifying maybe b is the correct answer how they will refer to all sources that is called as confirmation bias in psychology we say it is confirmation bias means you already have you want, because you have an interest in that particular option because you you marked it right so you are trying to prove everything that says that b is right whereas your friend who has put c as right he'll say no 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 it is c is the right answer and in this all time they waste and the other time they are worried what and they keep everything all future comes to you no know, everything all their future and past the parents what their expectations are okay so parents faces come before their mind so all these things keep happening after prelim examination so the issue is you avoid all this the simple thing to avoid all of this is to clear prelims to top clear prelims in fact many people think with the moment prelims comes to their mind cut off also comes to their mind this prelims and cut off have been hyphenated somehow you have to dehyphenate this cut off should not be in your mind this is the first thing that i want to tell so from today cut off the thing about cut off should be removed from your mind whoever have removed cut off from their mind will definitely clear prelims and they will start writing main you know they'll start preparation for main examination immediately after prelim examination and that is what i want most students to do and i tell to all my students also i think the other students also have told this again and again if you see these students who have been clearing prelims with very high marks for them they you know just for because all are speaking they also say acha cut off is that much they are not worried about cut off any year they won't even ask about cut off that is all for you know mortal beings they think they feel they are already immortal that for you mere mortals acha okay you are fighting about cut off okay fight i am not worried about cut off you have to reach that stage whether you are writing for the first time second time third time it doesn't matter reaching that stage is very important and for reaching that stage there are a set of things you need to work on of course subject specific the other uh, faculty would so they are the experts in their field so they would be doing so what i would be doing about polity is what i'm here for so one we are going to do rapid revision okay now very good so anyways i you know how many questions have been coming i think uh, the uh, faculty also have told about this so polity somewhere around uh, one fifth of the question paper is from polity on an average somewhere between one fifth to one sixth so 15 to 20 questions definitely somewhere between 15 to 20 on a rare occasions it has gone to like one single digit it has gone but that year also you may think single digit questions why did they come so less because that year so many current affairs were asked if the current affairs component out of 100 if it suddenly goes to 30 then what happens is subject specific questions will all decrease current affairs especially government schemes policies like that once in a year once in once in a maybe 5 years or 6 years suddenly they ask such questions that also they ask such uh, such type of high weightage to current affairs come when there is a very big turmoil or when there is a pattern change when there is a kind of a pattern change what upsc does is suddenly you know the questions more come from current affairs pattern change in 2011 
from when your CSAT was introduced, you know, the second paper. And those years, paper 2 was also counted for cutoff. You are, what you are writing now is only qualifying, isn't it? Paper 2, CSAT, those 2011, 12, 13, even paper 2 was also counted for marks. So, a sudden change from 2010 to 2011. So, that is, you will see that, then what UPSC does is, array, bache, you know, they will not be able to see a sudden pattern change. So, we have to increase the current affairs component. So, those who at least worked on current affairs, they, they write well. So, that is their funda. So, current affairs component increases, subject component somewhat decreases. Happened in 2011, again happens in 2014, after 13. So, 13 may they have made one change with respect to optionals also. No more uh, two optionals, but only one optional. Earlier, we had two optionals. So, change to one optional. So, that was a complete change. So, from next year onwards, prelims, what they have done is, again, the component somewhat decrease again. So, afterwards, what, uh, what had happened is that, again, you were uh, paper 2, okay. So, usme say, again, the English and all as well, was very difficult. Issues were, uh, issues were raised with respect to attempts. So, attempts were increased, okay. So, two more attempts have been given from 4 to it has become 6. One additional attempt to all the others, this has been given. So, there is a change again to accommodate for the change. Whenever things happen, again the current affairs component increases. Otherwise, you would see, otherwise in other years, you will see somewhere around 15 to 20, sometimes even going all the way up to 22 in 2017 has gone all the way up to 22 polity questions. So, you can expect about one fifth of the paper 20 questions from polity. Now, the how many can you get right? Many of them say polity is very easy. Sure, it is easy when questions are easy, marks are not easy because options are confusing. Hope you have seen previous polity year questions, anyone or most of you, you have seen polity questions. When you see questions in preliminary examination, you think that okay, this is an easy question. But when you ask students, anyone who has written prelims earlier or those who have actually, you may be your seniors who have written, if you ask them, then if 19 questions came, 20 questions came, then how many were you able to put them right, how many did you get them correct. If it is so easy, if they are saying, if because the perception is polity is easy, then out of 19 questions or 20 questions, you should get at least 17, 18 right, is not it? Chalo, two marks and all, there were two factual questions were there, some committee was asked, some Devilal was asked, which many of also do not know, very factual question, if they come, they are meant to be left also, that I will come to that part. But the other questions, in the other questions, if they are simple, you should get them right. Chalo, three questions we will leave, 17 you have to get right, 17 twos are 34 marks are, should be there in your hands, is not it? But when you, the, the difference that made some people to clear prelims and that did not clear prelims is, I, I do not care about what the other subjects they are saying because before last year they asked some questions from agriculture, so what happens? Again, there is a craze to go behind agriculture and rural development schemes. In 2020, when questions were asked on agriculture, so what, what students do? Achha, you know, they are asking from agriculture, rural development. Everyone started reading agriculture. If in 2021, one set of questions were asked, everyone will go off that. This herd mentality, you have to stop. Because UPSC will not exactly follow that, whatever you are thinking, it does not do. Think about what is there in our hands. What can you do? History, history questions also, one year they ask questions from some Tamil Nadu textbooks. Because they have asked from Tamil Nadu textbooks, everyone you know, NCRTs they also they are neglecting and they start reading Tamil Nadu history textbooks. Thinking that, Acha, from here UPSC is asking questions. Who told you that, did, it, did UPSC tell, I will ask you from these books? It is not like that. It may randomly pick anywhere. This year also questions, you know, randomly somewhere they have come, 2021 prelims also in history. So, some, you know, from some book he found one question and he asked, another book somewhere he has asked. Environment, there is no specific one book from here, only questions will come. 
But when it comes to polity, the perception is created as if you know, as if all the questions get asked from uh, Lakshmi Kant. Year after year, they are decreasing. That's why questions coming from Lakshmi Kant. Yes, Lakshmi Kant is the is the most comprehensive and simplified book to understand. Definitely. That's why you know most students, even if I say no, also still students would, would continue to read Lakshmi Kant. I'm not denying because for a basic understanding and revision, Lakshmi Kant book is really good. But will it be sufficient? You go and refer last year question paper may how many questions have come from Lakshmi Kant? You go and refer. Hardly like maybe six or seven questions came. Then what about the other thirteen questions? Chalo, two, three questions you leave, they are like too factual. Nobody could have answered them including faculty that we should also admit because they are too factual who knows they, they will all how many times he contested in which book it is there. Maybe the professor who was living during they will all time and all he has got that in mind and he had asked that question. Otherwise some questions sometimes they are they are designed in such a way for you not to answer. But you are going ahead and you are answering and getting negative marks. There are questions which are meant to be left do not don't touch those questions unless you you are able to eliminate. Sometimes what happens through elimination you can come to the right answer. So if you do that okay fine go ahead. But there are questions specifically meant to be left that is all do not do not touch them. Because it is, in, it is in between three options or four options you are confused do not answer such questions. If you are confused only between two options very sure between two okay go ahead but otherwise do not answer. But students are answering them also because they think you know polity is easy I will answer premeditated mindset you have gone with thinking that you know my seniors told or someone told I should answer I should at least attempt 90 questions it seems otherwise I won't qualify a prelims it seems. Who told all you, you all this? At the end of the day exam is relative depending upon that day do you know how the question paper will be tough or easy or uh, medium difficulty who told nobody knows the question paper what it is going to be like. Last year the questions was relatively difficult. When the, when, the, when the question paper is relatively difficult, cutoffs will come down. Then even if you have attempted 75, 80 also, there are chances of uh, you know, clearing uh, you know, the, the so called cutoff. Some years when paper is maybe you know, relatively on the easier side, especially current affairs, when too many current affairs are asked, that time most people read current affairs and that too, those years if you, if you have seen the questions like in 2015, 2016 or 2013, simple questions were asked. Like recently in the news, so and so is related to dash and in the options also two bad options they give. The three options are not even relevant to the subject. So if you, if you are just someone who regularly follows current affair also you can mark that answer. So, so easy they would give you if they are asking too many easy of current affairs. That year cutoffs will go instead of 100 it will go to 120 also cutoff. So, Cutoffs may dwindle, do not have premeditated mindset, I should attempt this many questions only. You do not know how many questions you will attempt. That day's examination will decide how many questions you will attempt. So, in polity also, there is no nothing so specific that questions will come only this many questions will come. On an basic idea, we have achha, maybe around 15 to 20 questions, so we may get. But can you say that you know they will come from this subject only, this book only, there is no one book as such. So what can we do? So when there is so much of volatility, when there is so much of uncertainty with respect to prelims, what can we do is to stick to the basics. Stick to the basics, be strong with basics, whatever regular that we do that we should do and sometimes to meet those unconventional areas we can go a little out of our zone and prepare for them also. But the most important thing is whoever have made the least number of mistakes qualified the examination. Out of these 19 questions that came, so those who are able to get at least 16 or chalo 15, 16 if they have got right, let us say they have left two questions or three questions or they got wrong also. But those who could score this much out of 19. They, they had higher chances of uh, you know, going and writing main examination. Environment varied from different sources they have asked. History, you know, 
Bhagwan Jane, you know what kind of questions they are asking because people, but does that mean that you will go on and reading all the books that are available in the market? How much will you read? Already just for reading your NCRTs itself, it takes so much time to read history, isn't it? And revising them. So if it is difficult for you, it is difficult for everyone else. So do not be bothered in such occasions. If it is difficult for you, let us say you are a serious aspirant who has revising number of times and you have known history, you have, you have attended all the classes, you have revised enough number of times, then that is the minimum thing you can do, more than that you cannot do. How many other books will you start reading? You cannot read, maybe one or two books you have read, revise them enough, okay. So because out of let us say how many questions have come from history, 10, so let us say 10 questions. Let us say 7 of them are difficult, 3 of the 6 or 7 of them are difficult. It is they are difficult for everyone. So questions which are difficult for everyone, uh, do not be bothered about it. Why are you worried about it? Everyone makes mistakes or everyone leaves them. Better thing is to if you are not able to eliminate them, leave them. But questions which you know, at least you have an idea about, about the topic. If they are easy, then there you should not leave. There you should not make mistakes. That happened with polity last year. Polity may 19 may say 17 questions you can attempt and you can get the right answer. 17 you can get, 2 you should have left. But 17 out of 17 you should have scored. If you scored 15, 16 also very good mark. These are the students and if they did not make too many mistakes in other subjects, these people went ahead and they have written main examination. Now this happened with polity last year, I am not saying every year will this be the trend, no. What if polity becomes difficult next year, this coming prelims, so do not always expect polity will be so easy, this is also another uh, wrong perception they have created, Achha, you know polity is easy, just read Lakshmi Kant, Hogaya, you know, it is all, who told you, it should be that easy. If history, history earlier questions were all easy, people said you know, there used to be a perception in 2011 to 15 onwards that you know, are you know you leave medieval history, no need, they, they are not asking many questions from medieval, read ancient that to read about you know Buddhism, Jainism and all and then read modern, from here only questions will ask. So UPSC said, acha, okay, you are so brilliant, who is the paper setter here? UPSC said, I am the paper setter, we will decide, who told you that they will ask only from this area, they have changed and they are asking from other, other areas, they have started asking randomly. So suppose next year in out of polity questions, let us say they have given 15 or let us say 20 questions they have given. In 20 questions, let us say they are going to make, okay, some four, 12 to 14 questions they are going to make difficult, let us say. 12 to 14 questions they are going to make very difficult for you. And let us say 8 questions would be somewhat like easy on the easier side. Now your responsibility is, is that, 8 questions you are not going to make a single mistake. Out of those 8 easy to moderate questions, single mistake also you should not be making. In these 12 to 14 questions, how many can you answer? Can you deduce an answer? Can you reach upon an answer? Maybe 4, because I am saying, I am only saying it is tough. Maybe, maybe 4 questions you are able to deduce an answer working out from the options, eliminating from the options. You are able to deduce maybe between 2 options and you are able to put. So, out of 20 you are attempting, 12 or 14 you are attempting, good enough. It is not designed, if, if UPSC decided to make that, that particular topic, that particular subject tough, you cannot do anything. Remember this, not everything is in your hands. The exam is not designed to score 200 out of 200. The exam is, why are the cutoffs falling near 90s and 100s, why are they falling? Because they, they know that some certain questions to the paper setters, they already tell. See, out of 100 questions, this many questions have to be tough. These questions should be moderate difficulty. Some questions should be easy. Any wise paper setter, that is a format given to them. So in polity also, what they do is certain questions, they deliberately make tough. Certain subjects, they make deliberately tough. So next year, if polity becomes difficult, then what happens? Then at least the the easy to moderate questions, are you able to definitely answer them 100 percent? That should be your first target. The other, can you deduce an answer? So this is, this is our area of work. Out of 20 then, if it is too difficult, out of 20, getting the 12 to 14 questions is our responsibility. This is there in your hands. If you get that right, 
So this I am giving example of history and polity. Who knows? It may be any other subject. They may decide to make economy tough, or they may decide to make some other subject tough. It depends. Year to year, they may make one or the other subject tough, or moderate difficulty of all the questions of all the subjects also they can make, with some areas of toughness. Or certain unconventional questions also got started from last year. Some unconventional questions which are not expecting. Suddenly, a, a question is asked from cricket, which students are not expecting. Some from the world of sports, they suddenly asked questions. Students were not expecting that. So it is known to give this uh, googlies suddenly. Okay. So basic things are we doing right is the most important. <coughs> sources for preparation what will you choose these are all your ncrts this is your uh, bible for uh, polity so called bible for polity so which one will you choose so most students they they keep on you know here only they want to i can show you that at least five questions got asked from NCRTs. Five questions got asked from NCRTs, but nobody gives so much of you know any bow to these NCRTs. Bichar, I say you know they are staying there and all. Sometimes they are saying please study us also. Okay, now and then open us also. But you know you don't care about it. You know we have this with us. This is important. This has simplified. What are not there here? They are there here. In a very nice format, but some things where the explanation is not there with respect to certain topics, they are there in NCRTs and also some some in uh, NIOS material also. In NIOS books are also there on political science. So from there also certain areas questions have been asked in the last few years. So which means that luckily you know history is so vast that you know some other sources they can pick. But when it comes to polity, na, luckily it is uh, somewhat you know it is defined from where you know constitution. No matter how wherever you go and all, it is constitution only. Or related to constitution, current affairs are also related somehow to one article of the constitution. If there is so much controversy that is happening about uh, in Karnataka about hijab and all that also, they are again uh, they are either related to your article 25, article 26, article 19, article 21, whether they are violating article 15 article 14 around these articles only they keep coming again so they are related to they won't ask about you know what happened in hijab and all they don't ask in prelims in prelims they will ask you if at all if they ask they will ask you what is essential religious practice in which case has the supreme court decided with respect to essential religious practice so we'll wait and see it is still playing out let it play out so when when uh, match is going on you should not go and uh, read ball to ball commentary you should not read in my opinion Okay. Why why do you read every day? Achha, today what did I quote? I quote hearings are going on, let them go out. By the time of your examination, something will come out at that time you read it. Daily if you read also, just you know, just go through it, need not go everything about it. Towards the end, nicely you will get in a crisp manner, you will get that you read, that you that you nicely save in your mind. So, polity, luckily, there is a scope is defined. The syllabus is somewhat defined. You, if you, you, if anything else is asked suddenly from historically, if you are asked about some committee and all, leave it. I'll tell you where to leave it, which type of questions leave it. Looking at the previous year's questions, we'll see which questions to leave. Also, we can see. But some areas we definitely, you know, have to work on them and around them also. It's not just important to learn maybe one topic, but also around the topic also, around the periphery also, we have to go. If we see certain, so yeah, sources for prelims. If you are seeing, NCRT is also important, but NCRTs are like kind of you know it is for kids now. It is very like boring sort of it becomes. But some areas can be picked from NCRTs. So uh, so whoever are attending the workshop, I'll tell you ki what areas you can pick from the NCRTs, which can be converted into questions, and how UPSC has converted them into questions earlier. 
from NCRTs and NOAs. So then what can we do, which other areas can be, if they are going to be questions, how we should answer them, those we can, those can be seen. So apart from your Lakshmikanth, do not become too complacent, sir I already studied two to three times Lakshmikanth, I have studied, my preparation is done, then attempt your previous year's questions you attempt, you will not even get like more than 12 out of 20, if you read only Lakshmikanth. Yes, that is important, you have to complete that, but go beyond that scope also. Last two, three years you are like relatively happier because easy questions came from polity. You are thinking that achha, I may get at least able to add, attempt to 70 percent, 80 percent in polity. But next year may not be like that. It may be made difficult and history will be directly questions, simple questions may be asked. Simple questions may be asked, Indian National Congress, what did it do here, what did it do here, what resolution, simple questions which you are regularly say, when was the split occurring in Congress, these, these type of questions may come, easy questions may come from history and who knows, maybe geography will be made difficult or polity may, will be made difficult, you do not know. But one thing that is there in our hands is very good revision and anticipation of questions. This many students neglect. First, first time when you are studying, okay, to understand. Second time when you are studying, understand the topic. Third time when you are revising, third time onwards, when you are revising the subject, na, it is not just about revision of a subject. You should anticipate questions. You should see previous year questions and start anticipating questions. What if this is converted to question? You should think like a paper setter. That is very important. So the moment you are able to think like a paper setter, if you are, if you prepare question from this area, how will I ask? When you get into that mode, na, then you know you will study well, you will study in depth. So no matter how tough they make also, still you will be able to answer when you get into that mode, mode of anticipation of questions, when you are studying the subject, when you are revising the subject. So that is important. So apart from that is why sources may also, whenever you read NCRTs, when you read NOS book is there on political science, these are all available online, okay, no new book to buy and all polity, I never uh, suggest anybody to buy any new book. If you have basic that Lakshmi Gant, yeah, that, that you keep, but other than that also, your uh, NCRTs are available online, your NOS book on political science is online, download them on your mobile or laptop and keep them ready and you have to revise that as well and anticipate questions. Current affairs part. Current affairs may in uh, with, with coming to politic related current affairs, they are not just current affairs asking for the sake of asking, they do not ask. How are they related to again to constitution? So, sorry. how are these current affairs, anything that is happening like I told you hijab controversy is going on, how is it related to articles, how is it related to fundamental rights? How is it related to Supreme Court's uh, interpretation of a certain article, certain fundamental right? What is religious practice? What is essential religious practice? So on those it will ask question. It won't ask directly from what is there in the current affair. So uh, these current affairs you have to do in a very customized format knowing a little background and whether, whether there were any earlier Supreme Court judgments regarding it what was the interpretation then and what can be the interpretation now. So from those dimensions you need to study, connect them to your uh, constitution and study. Do not study them just for the sake of you know, uh, achha, this something, something had happened, this is an event. You should not be studying events, you should be studying about the link to constitution, link to fundamental rights. So because in your uh, syllabus if you see, they have mentioned rights issues. Rights issues they have mentioned, rights issues means it can be fundamental rights, it can be other rights also. Many people mistake that you know only fundamental rights are rights. That is why they are asking you difference what type of right this is, is, is it a fundamental right, is it a constitutional right, is it a legal right? Definitely there are going to be questions on rights, but they, 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 they did not mention it is fundamental rights. They may ask you about right to vote. Do we have a right to, you know, do you have like a right to vote as a, is it a fundamental right? Is it a fundamental right? Is it a fundamental right to go and vote? Then what is, is it a constitutional right? 
or is it a legal right? Is anything with respect to voting mentioned in the constitution? Yes. So, these are the things we need to work on. Other than rights also there, other than fundamental rights also there are rights. Even with respect to right to property also. It is not a fundamental right, but it is there in the constitution, which means it becomes a constitutional right and also a legal right. So, what, do, what are the differences between them you should know. So, go a little one, two steps deeper you have to go. Bare reading of Lakshmikant will not give you this idea. Lakshmikant told, Acha, this is this, this is this, this is the simplification of this. But a little more understanding deeper you need to go and then you will do in prelims well. Keep this in mind. Read the FAQ sections of government websites. This is one area where people, you know, see UPSC will paper setters at the end of the day, they want to discourage coaching institutions. This is, this is a fact, UPSC does not want you know that you know people who are taking coaching and all, why should they have one advantage, okay. It is as if you know anybody anywhere sitting anywhere also should be able to study. But the problem is that you are now spoiled for so, so many resources are there, people do not know what to study. Too many sources are there. When they start studying too many sources here, here, here and all, paper, your preparation is becoming very haphazard. It is not happening in a sequential order, but for basic sources for at least for your prelim examination they are already, so the, the intention of UPSC is that we will ask from some basic sources also. Where are those basic sources? Internet. Now most of you, most of us, you know any village also, any place also they have access to internet now. So if they, if they do not have, for example, when the moment you say parliament, so parliament ke baare mein, constitutional whatever are there in the articles and what are what happens in parliament procedures and everything you can find them in the faq sections of lok sabha website rajya sabha website there you will find faqs in the faq sections they do mention what is this what is this procedure what is this what is no confidence motion what is adjournment motion what is tabling of bills who is a private member private member bills these are all mentioned but people neglect, they do not study. Okay. You give a blind eye to government websites and from there you know suddenly a question is asked. Then you wonder why this question came out of Lakshmikan. Who told, did UPSC tell? UPSC did not tell study from Lakshmikan. They may not be in NCRT, but they are a, there in some government authentic site is there for it. So, you should have referred to that. Similarly is with respect to other uh, ministries also, ministry of tribal affairs is there. If you go to ministry of tribal affairs and see there, you will find there about forest rights act. It may not be mentioned in any NCRTs and Lakshmi Gandhi and all, it may not be mentioned. Maybe with later editions, they will try to add it, but you can just go to the website and see there, find there enough material for uh, prelims. Even for mains also it helps. So, make it a habit to visit government websites. Make it a habit to visit you know, various ministries are there, departments are there, ministry of finance. The moment budget comes, many people what they do, budget and all, you wait for newspapers. So, who asked you to wait for newspaper? There is a site for budget, indiabudget.nic.in you know, something is there. If you go there, you will find budget highlights. They are only nicely making highlights and giving it to you. So, why do not you click that PDF and open it? You will find nicely pictographically, they are mentioning everything, all the budget highlights. Because in newspapers, newspapers they never told we are we are designing our newspapers only for civil services aspirants. Newspapers never told that. They are making for all the set of audience. So they will be mentioning lot of things. They need not focus on highlights. Some newspapers may focus on highlights, or maybe the institutes will work and give you the highlights of budget or something. But you yourself also can do it. Looking at these websites. So that's why you know. Uh, daily spend some time on visiting one or the other government website and looking at the, do not read too many programs and schemes and too many are there, you cannot be studying everything. But important ones for your FAQ sections if you go or about us section is there. What is this about us? Means they, they will tell you constitutionally this is there for us. This is our mandate, these are our duties, functions, powers. Go to controller and auditor general website, CAG. 
So there you will find about a section, constitutional perspective they will give. That much you study, you get an idea. So make it, make that a habit, okay, election commission. So programs and schemes also try to read from the ministry websites. Of course, you, if you get a compendium, okay, fine. But what will happen is, just one month before the examination, somebody sends you one booklet or some PDF, some material, read all government webs, go, read all government's programs and schemes. That time what you will be, you will be by hearting. And you know that the government is very famous for all acronyms and everything. Too many acronyms are there. What is not an acronym today? Everything is like one or the other acronym is there for uh, any government scheme or program. Prime Minister is uh, very famous for coining acronyms. Okay, this, that and all, you know, I, I forgot, I uh, keeping a track of different acronyms. Now, if you keep on studying them and all, you will get confused. That too at the last moment when you are already in becoming tensed, when you study, you will become tensed. Rather, do it ministry wise. Go to that particular ministry, go to the ministry of tribal affairs. There you see programs and schemes and there you, you see, achha, for tribals, these are the schemes and they are in order also. They are in a one particular order. These schemes are for doing for certain things to ensure forest rights, to, this is for minor forest produce, this is for marketing of the tribal produce. Like the different, you know, schemes are there, you go and you see them, then you get an idea. Or for minorities, go to Ministry of Minority Affairs, there you will find particular schemes, you are finding them. So, some Pado Parde scheme is there. Sometimes from the word, from the, just from the uh, words that are mentioned in the title of the scheme itself, you can get an idea. But that will not be sufficient. So, is there any income level for that? Is it only for below poverty line or above poverty line? Or everyone can avail of it? So, these things are made into questions and asked. So, that is why uh, go each one and do them properly. That is why organically you will be able to take these uh, schemes into yourself. Otherwise, one booklet study everything, everything is studying, everything you are, if you are, uh, you know, by hearting and all, you cannot remember. Keep this in mind. How much there is a there is a limit to how much you can uh, by heart, right? So don't don't focus too much on by hearting everything. So some organically they must enter into you. You must induce them into yourself. That is through your research or through your work. So keep this in mind. So the trend, if you see the last few years, if you are seeing conceptual understanding also is important. It is not just you know article I know, article number I know, article 21 I know, it is not enough. Article 21 suddenly okay, I am able to connect article 21 life and personal liberty. This much you have connected, not enough. What is the meaning of uh, life? As per article 21, what is the meaning of life? It is not just a mere life. It is about you know, Everything that makes life living worthwhile, life with dignity. So, see, this is Supreme Court's interpretation about life. Life means it is not about I am surviving, I have breath. That is not life. Then there are many questions surrounding around life. There are many issues that happened in the last six years about life. For example, euthanasia. Right to live means do you also have right to die? That was a question that came before Supreme Court. If you have right to live, does it mean that you, can you take your own life? So, do you have right to suicide also? So, these all questions have, you know, these were, these were the areas which have gone to the Supreme Court in the case of Aruna Schoenberg, that is euthanasia case. And also, there was another with respect to Sallekhana, okay. So, Jain monks and all, somebody wanted to, you know, do a Sajiva Samadhi. You must have heard of saints taking Samadhi. So, is it allowed constitutionally? Can somebody, you know, end their life? Or euthanasia, if they are in a comatose state and all, if they are not properly living, should they be allowed? Can we give active euthanasia? Supreme Court said, no. You cannot kill like that anyone. Only passive euthanasia is given. Passive euthanasia means you must have heard, no, when somebody is in, during COVID times, you heard a lot. Somebody went on ventilator. So, only because of ventilator, they are surviving. So, removal of the ventilator, if you are removing it, so there is no, that because of support only they are living, that is all. Otherwise, they, they won't be able to breathe on their own. That if you, if the, if the relatives give consent to remove that ventilator, that is not killing, that one should not be considered like killing. 
you are doing only a passive thing. But active euthanasia is you know you are actually injecting something lethally because the person is in you know is not able to live properly. So, if we are injecting something or we are doing something, you are giving something and making them die, then that is active euthanasia. Supreme Court said active euthanasia you cannot allow, only passive euthanasia will be allowed it said in Aruna Schoenberg case. So, see life only when you read about article 21 only from only from the constitutional perspective, you should not forget the various cases in the last 6, 7 years the landmark judgments that have come, you should also connect to them. About article 21 every year there are questions, it can be on privacy, repeated also on privacy, it can be about the right to marry, it can be about right to shelter, it can be about because we are saying liberty because life and liberty, liberty means again privacy gets included, your right to choose your marriage partner that is also there. So, many things are covered just in article 21. So, in article 21 you have to read in the widest amplitude possible. Supreme Court itself had used very wide interpretation it had taken when it came to article 21. So, these things you must not miss when you are studying about article 21. Whatever latest developments that have happened in the last 6-7 years also you must keep in mind. So, question may not come about directly saying what is article 21 or what is there under article 21. The question may be somehow they are going and going and asking about maybe uh, privacy, maybe about homosexuality they may ask or maybe they may ask about uh, an essential religious practice they may ask. Maybe they may ask about women's rights to various rights are there with respect to women's rights have all been under question now. They have all become issues be it about uh, without the consent they being divorced by saying triple talaq thrice or be it with respect to their uh, uh, right to enter into temple like Shabarimala or be it with respect to recent controversy about uh, they wearing uh, you know any, any dress of their choice. So, somewhere around that you know a question can be framed, but how it can be framed from constitutional perspective is what you should be anticipating when you read that questions. Okay. So, if you have good conceptual understanding, then if you if you are able to link to current affairs, then a question can be asked from that area. Okay. And uh, 2021 onwards certain unconventional questions are asked, we cannot guess those unconventional, very difficult to uh, you know, know from where questions are being asked. If that unconventional component increases, then polity become tough. So, long as they are asking from factual, factual is all about articles, your articles are read, traditionally what have been asked. So, that should not be a problem for you if you do good revision. Current affairs also if you are able to do good and if you are able to link them then no problem. But when slowly from political science concepts they are being asked from you know 2016 onwards political science concepts started. Here you need to have good knowledge. For example, uh, let us see. In 2017, very simple question, if you if you anytime you have read preamble and all anybody can answer this question. Which one of the following objectives is not there in preamble? Economic liberty is not mentioned. So, okay, but it is about you know which liberty, which liberty has, has been mentioned in the preamble is asked. Easy question, 2017, 2018 again liberty, again a question on liberty, but they have made this time they have made it tough. They have connected with law and liberty, they have connected. See, again question on liberty, but this time the question is asked, what is the relationship between law and liberty? But here they wanted to emphasize whether you know about the positive concept of liberty and negative concept of liberty. So, emphasis was that, what is negative liberty, what is positive liberty, as they have conceptualized because this is this is purely this is a question which has been taken from some is also there in NCRT, it is also there in NIOS, it is not there in Lakshmikanth. This question is in this this topic is not mentioned in Lakshmikanth, but in NCRT it is there, it is mentioned positive, negative, liberty, and all is mentioned. When the concept of freedom, when discussing freedom, it is mentioned mentioned in NCRT. But NOS more specifically they have given negative liberty, positive liberty. So, people missed out. So, they could not answer. 
So at least when you know a question is being asked, you should next at least when you are preparing for the next time, go a little more depth into the political science concept. All the preambulatory values you have to go into deep because so many questions from preambles. So relation between law and liberty is asked. Answers, of course, we, you, you know the answer I hope, by now you should have seen the answers but anyways. So if there are no laws, there is no liberty. Lawless society, then nobody enjoys freedoms. Again 2019 another question on liberty. Which one and the, see the type of question is asked for what will you accept the most appropriate definition like that they are asking. They are not asking question what is the answer because all the others also seem very close to the answer. So which is the most appropriate answer they are asking. So because others also may look like okay there is a chance other options also may be true. But most likely definition, most appropriate definition they are asking. Protection against the, see because the absence of restraint is also liberty, there is no doubting that. Okay. Opportunity to do whatever one likes also, that is also liberty only. Protection against the tyranny of political rulers, yes, but protection as such is you know not liberty as such, but let us say if you are free from any political rulers uh, restraints that also can be liberty, but they want to know whether you know the holistic definition of liberty. Again, this also is there in your NCRT and NOS. Just that when you are reading it, you did not pay attention or you did not understand it properly, you have just read it. Conceptual depth is not there, conceptual understanding is not there, then the question becomes difficult to answer. Many faltered here also, they, have, they felt that maybe absence of restraints. Because that is where what the, the absence of restraints I think is mentioned in Lakshmikan. So they went and they marked uh, B. Some people they did not even go up op till option D. Here is where you will make mistakes, silly mistakes. If you make such silly mistakes, they increase, if they keep on increasing, then your chances of clearing prelims will become minimal. Again 2021 question is asked on liberty. See only on liberty, one preambulatory value so many times they are recurring. Which one of the following factors constitute the best safeguard of liberty? See so many times liberty, one value in preamble repeated almost every year they got asked in the last 5 years. And this also is, uh, this as a topic also, liberty if you have, see so many times because liberty is asked, I should know, I should have full command over liberty you should think. So whoever have gone and done that work they could answer, others and all what happened is okay they have left it. But the topic is there in NOS book, not there in Lakshmikant again, okay. Some people got confused, so com what is committed judiciary, they have got confused, some, some opted for committed judiciary, some opted for separation of powers. Some went, uh, went ahead for uh, elected government, some put a coalition. What is the answer? Separation of powers. So how can, how can you say it is separation of powers? How will separation of powers uh, ensure liberty in, in a democracy? So then you should know concept of separation of powers. Next time question may not be on liberty. It may be on uh, independence of judiciary and versus uh, committed judiciary it can be. The question can be with respect to ind independent judiciary and committed judiciary. How independent judiciary we are? That should be understood, the concept should be understood. Is our, do you think our uh, judiciary, uh, independence of judiciary, if let us say, if you are to compare with the uh, United States and India, which judiciary do you think is more independent, US judiciary or independent, India's judiciary? India's judiciary. Indian judiciary is more independent compared to US judiciary. How can you say that? With respect to appointment of judges. Their executive has a very good say. President decides there when it comes to appointment of judges. But in India, you know, in a way judiciary is somehow, you know, it has innovatively, it, uh, it has created and it uh, interpreted this collegium and judiciary is appointing itself. In judiciary, all the related issues that are there in the recent past, that also you have to study, especially with respect to transfer of high court judges. There is a lot of controversy in the last few months. So who transfers judges, why they are transferred, when they are transferred, 
this also you have to go a little more deep what is there in the constitution what actually happens this you have to study chief justice becoming chief justice of a high court when a judge has to become a chief justice of high court can anyone tell me the procedure how can a judge get becomes the chief justice on what criteria age seniority means not age what does seniority means your experience in that court seniority in the high court okay so senior most judge of the high court becomes the chief justice of that high court is it correct if i say senior senior most judge of the high court he will become the next chief justice of that high court is it correct statement some are saying yes some are saying no if you are saying no then say why it is no if you are saying yes then how many are, okay let me just take it. my statement is clear to all of you senior most judge of a high court becomes the next chief justice of that high court how many of you want to agree with this statement can you raise your hands nobody okay so all of you are disagreeing or uh, all of you don't want to get negative mark so you are avoiding negative marks from now onwards okay how many of you disagree with this statement raise your hands okay others are all left the left the question no negative marks okay can you tell me why why you disagree with the statement any one of you you are disagreeing correct but you should know right no no high court i am saying i am not saying supreme court no my question you did not understand high court judges are there from high court judges who will be made chief justice of that you know chief justice is there in high court so among so let us say in our high court these four people are uh, judges okay let us say high court of telangana these four, four these four judges are there all of them are high court judges among them now let us say one chief justice was there that seat became vacant see he has gone he is retired 62 years you know or 6 years of uh, service whichever is earlier he completed let us say 62 gone so now among these four somebody should become chief justice so or somebody should sit in that chief justice post who will you make i am saying this person your name prithviraj prithviraj is the senior most judge among the seniority he has a, he has like let us say four year, five years experience he has in the telangana high court he has three he has two he has one who will be made as a high court judge should i say that prithviraj will be made as the next chief justice is it correct or not so some some are uh, worrying what it is some are saying no he should not be made then who will you make no you should not consider age as such see there is a see here, here is where not everything is clear in lakshmikant with respect to procedures also generally chief justice when the person when there is a vacancy okay and somebody has to make chief justice generally what happens is from another high court the senior most chief justice who are is going almost eligible for chief justice so she will be made from madras high court chief justice and she will be made and made to sit here as chief justice and he also has come to the level of chief justice he will be taken and he will be made as madras high court chief justice not necessarily swap but some other high courts chief justice that's why you will see so from another high court a person has been brought as chief justice you will see instead of from that high court but rarely when the person has only like one year of one year of service left let us say he is already 64 years 64 years or two months so in a, sorry 61 years or two months he has only like 10 months of service then he will be made as are why to transfer him and all that's why the person will be made as chief justice okay so there are certain procedures which are there with respect to chief justice appointment or high court appointments and all so generally we need not be studying all those procedures not necessary but when there is a controversy na because uh, you have seen uh, madras high court chief justice is sent to meghalaya high court he is saying are i want to be chief justice and be here in madras high court from here you have you are twice it happened from madras high court only twice it happened tail ramani earlier and now sanjeev benerji somebody who has uh, become chief justice but you are putting them in meghalaya high court yes can you do it like that yes so that can be converted into a question now 
because you should then you should you should have applied that acha chief justice is generally made chief justice and sent to another high court not that in that same high court to make it in the same high court generally they say you know only one year of service and all is left and all generally they see otherwise they transfer to another high court but why is controversy created there with respect to sending to meghala high court because here in madras high court the judges strength is somewhat 60 or 70 in meghala high court only four judges are there okay so from a 70 judges high court from from an important high court which takes up number of cases he has such an importance you are taking it to i am not speaking less of meghalaya but the see the population of meghalaya see the number of cases that come to meghalaya okay maybe you know in a hyderabad city civil court has like you know, enjoys more stature you know, compared to relatively not much many cases are coming in meghalaya to level of high court there you are making you are sending as a high court chief justice so that's why you know the question comes acha are you interfering with judiciary why is is it a punishment transfer such issues are reported in the newspapers so it became controversial controversy aspect to upsc will not ask you don't worry there are politics involved or what judge, what judgments benerji had given earlier that it won't be bothered about but it can ask a question like this it will ask about what is the process of a chief justice making some a judge as chief justice or how do you elevate a high court judge to a supreme court judge so these are these are there but you know a little more one step deeper if you go you would find these such questions so it is anticipation now what did i do i anticipated a question so when you are studying current affairs so it's not about why the judge got transferred and all your reasons may be there but what are the earlier precedents what are the procedures that should be studied it can be made into a question so that anticipatory approach you should keep developing so overall in polity specifically and in general also your attitude has to be right in to score highest marks in prelims first thing is remove cut off from your mind you should take that you know if i i should get definitely 30 40 marks above cut off minimum that attitude you should start now itself you, it may look you know it may look like what sir what sir if i clear cut off enough sir for me who to, if you if you are with that mentality i'm i'm telling you you won't clear cut off it may be very harsh for you but i'm i'm saying the truth if you are already if i clear cut off kuch bhi ho jaye you know just i want to clear cut off and write mains if you have that attitude you won't clear prelims i should ace prelims i should be number 1 in prelims that should be your motto that should be your target whenever prelims is conducted you know i should get the highest marks in the class or in whatever modal test you are writing i should get the highest take that as a challenge so your right attitude you should get target the highest marks be strong in basics some people you know somehow it, it may be it may be your fault faculty fault or whatever or when you are studying you didn't study properly or you know with gaps you have studied or you are studying basics and you looked at your whatsapp and you are studying again whatsapp and you are studying because of whatever reason your if they are if there are lacuna in your foundation basics itself if you are weak na then it is time for start from the scratch from the basics again you start nothing no need to worry about start from the scratch make your foundation very strong still there is time still there is time there is no fault of you uh, you know nothing wrong if you actually again start from the beginning starting from ncert is also nothing wrong if you feel that but whichever subject all subjects you can't be weak in basics right maybe one or two subjects you know which where you are weak at so start there and make your foundation very strong then you do tests then you come to you know revise then you have this anticipatory approach but if you feel that you know some one subject somehow i missed i am not very i don't have clarity there i don't know basics also i don't know the interconnections between one and the other topic then go back and work from the beginning it's never too late remember it's never too late whichever subject still can be done conceptual understanding is important don't rote learn don't just keep by hearting concept you will learn well holistic understanding is important not just you know sir they are asking question about liberty i will read about liberty no i told you an example tomorrow it may be about fraternity do you know everything about fraternity fraternity means what why was it put in the preamble what does it signify by putting fraternity there and what is the link between fraternity and dignity 
and what is the link between dignity and unity and integrity these things you should uh, interrelate then you have acha you know holistically about uh, these values that are mentioned in preamble revision and test regular regularly done in the i think uh, in the workshop also regularly revision and test are thing so if you feel that you know i need to have a a, a program which is a very disciplined format if i want to do so then you can you know attend the workshop where you will see that you know every day this concept i got a complete understanding i got basics became strong conceptual understanding you got around the topic also you got an idea and now how can questions be asked if a question is asked like this how will i answer in a structured format if you want to if you want to do then you know workshop will help you or if you feel that you know no these things i can do then you can do on your own so it's okay so anticipatory approach should be done in revision now one words all the while you have read lakshmikanth i know many people have read lakshmikanth but if you have read it up to now only like you have just once twice you have seen and understood every time you are understanding no this time go into depth and you prepare a question one para you read and think of how how i should make a question here how if if let us say somebody gave a job to you to prepare a question from that para how will you make on which on which will you make create four options quickly again don't uh, spend lot of time there quickly try to make a question there and uh, try to put like two three options if not four acha uh, like this question can be asked so try to do that in your third revision fourth revision go with anticipatory approach intelligent guessing is also important sometimes calculated risks have to be taken sometimes elimination you will have to do sometimes reading the question fully also is important okay these are areas of high probability that can be asked in preliminary examination based on what we have seen in the last 7 years we felt ki these areas are being focused by most professor see some professor sets uh, few professors are given how upsc prepares question papers is it generally gives you know it selects three or four professors it selects of different universities all over india and they they ask them to, this is done in full secrecy so th and that too those four they are asked to give a set of questions so let us say these four members are given set of questions he gives uh, let us say 15 questions he gives 20 questions 20 questions 20 questions so out of which you know few questions will be picked they also don't know for guarantee that those questions will come so few certain questions will be put what we are seeing in the last 7 uh, 8 years is that whoever are setting the paper the moment they say you know a, a professor who is uh, teaching constitutional law generally professors teaching constitutional law either in uh, law colleges in universities or maybe political science professors okay so these professors are generally chosen they are asked to prepare uh, question papers so when they prepare question papers so they are most of them are touching upon these so more are, some some of them are very very you know that's why preamble becomes the the crux of the constitution is there in the preamble so that's why preamble they definitely try to ask philosophy of the constitution is mostly touched because that is like the heart and soul of the constitution so your fundamental rights without fundamental rights you know it's a worthless paper so fundamental rights and directive principles become important basic structure definitely very important because that is the most rigid part of your constitution cannot be changed parliament generally questions are asked procedures and all when they when they refer to parliament about other motions or procedures or bills or types of bills money bill that bill number of things are asked in parliament federalism an ongoing debate about federalism in the country now so states are again pitched against the center especially non bjp states okay they are pitched against the center so it is becoming a center versus state debate again so that's all so about federalism center state relations panchayati raj because it is mentioned specifically in your if you see pre prelims notification if you see in that if you go and see what is the syllabus for prelims in that it mentions constitution constitution is mentioned but again you know specifically they mention panchayati raj which means you know if they specifically mention panchayati raj and if these professors who are preparing let me look at the syllabus and if they look at the syllabus they will find their panchayati raj so then they may put questions in panchayati raj definitely chances high chances are there 
elections and election commission this is one favorite area of uh, upsc where they can do some you know they can go beyond what is there uh, regularly there they can go beyond and ask they can ask what is vv pat you have seen vv pat all of you if you have voted if you voted you have seen vv pat so about just they may ask about vv pat what happens in vvpat also they may ask means they are not testing what you know they are testing whether you have gone to the polling booth or not so can you take that vvpat slip and go home what happens to that <laughs> it falls it falls there so or they may ask you about nota anything about nota they want to experiment and they may ask a little bit or election commission recently there is a controversy should election commissioners be called to pmo there is a controversy there so what is the independence of election commission is a question now it may come in main examination or in, in prelim examination they may ask if i ask a statement today with respect to independence of uh, election commissioners the salaries and uh, expenses and uh, pensions of uh, chief election commissioner and election commission they are charged on the consolidated fund of india is it a true statement yes or no any okay chief election commissioner is it charged on the consolidated fund of india go and check if it is charged why i am asking question okay there is a there is a little you know other constitutional bodies like upsc cag with respect to their independence you know so much of importance is given in constitution but when it comes to chief election commissioner election commissioner there are certain you know areas which need improvement security of tenure it is there you are correct there security of tenure chief election commissioner has security but other election commissioners they don't enjoy so much of security they can be removed by president only safeguard is you should ask the chief election commissioner chief election commissioner should give permission to remove the other election commissioners but chief election commissioner can't be removed easily that is there so that is the only difference in fact between chief election commissioner and other election commissioners so these things see now sir how do i know which independents are not prepared because there is an issue there outside with respect to is election commission behaving independently or not so what is all there with respect to behaving independently from there you should see and focus that area okay anti defection law this is always an issue it's not once or twice is always an issue that's why anti defection law you know uh, we need to strengthen there is so much of lacunae with respect to anti defection law so anyways towards the end uh, i want to Uh, certain important areas and all uh, they are just mentioned generally the last few years how they have been asking certain areas so uh, maybe uh, the next time when you come i'll ask them to give you a, a print out of it so which areas are have been asked in the last few years certain important constitutional amendments as well anyways we'll be uh, in the workshop we'll be trying to cover most of them the area themes these are the themes and out of which certain questions have come related topics have come so this will be covering anyways so finally i want to tell that don't think every year it is going to be easy don't think only lakshmikant i'll study and i will get things may change but you have to be ready it, but it's not difficult doesn't mean that if i say it it need not be easy doesn't mean that it should be very difficult all depends on strength that you have with respect to concepts next how have you revised have you just revised like that or have you gone into depth and revised and have you revised with an anticipatory approach have you given tests and learned from the tests why you are going wrong where you are going wrong how are you thinking when you are making mistakes making mistakes everyone makes mistakes you give me a question paper even i can make mistakes but what went into your thinking process when you made that mistake what get what influenced you to make that mistake that influence should not happen in the examination so this is our you know that should be your aim so keep them in mind tests you do but uh, another thing i want to tell you is tests are important daily you do but some people you know daily they keep doing only tests especially if you are writing for the first time last suggestion okay i'll wrap up especially those who are writing for the first time if you don't revise properly then there is no point of writing tests and tests first you revise properly gather stuff you should have stuff first then give test if you don't have stuff and if you keep on giving test what happens you make mistakes and you go and acha acha this is there this is there if you read your preparation becomes haphazard 
there will be so many dots and you know lacunae that will be left in your preparation. Come sequentially, do it sequentially. Tests you give, but ek bar revision karke do tests without revising. And if you keep directly appear in the examination, give tests and do some guesswork. Anyways, which you got correct, you won't be looking at them. Whichever you made mistakes, you are looking at them and you are feeling that acha okay there is error. Then you open your book and you have seen that. That is not the way to go about. For those who are giving like second attempt, third attempt prelims they are giving, yes, you can focus more on tests because you have already revised let us say 7, 8 times you have revised, then you should give more tests you have to give or topic wise tests if you go give also better. Today you completed one topic, you have revised it, then you give test on it. So do like that when you are giving tests, okay. So follow a proper order when giving tests. Okay, so finally I would like to tell that do not pray that you know easy questions, if easy questions come you know actually the competition becomes tough, you are not realizing it. I should get easy questions in the paper, do not pray like that. In fact, pray that you should get the proper strength to eliminate, proper strength to take guesswork, proper strength to diversify your preparation and to of course achieve the far above cutoff you should get not just somewhere near cutoff, no, I should top this prelims you should think, with that attitude you start. So your journey to become topper uh, in civil services final, it should start with becoming topper in prelims itself. From here itself you, you should aim and this is the, your first step, in first step itself you should ace it, even prelims. So then it becomes a sukoon, smooth ride, it, it, uh, it becomes when you are going towards main examination. Then you know, then time is given, you have three months. Then three months nicely you read your anthropology, you read your, uh, you know, you give tests in anthropology, you give tests in other, you, whatever your optional is and then GS, SA, for that you can spend time. Other, most others will waste their one month until the results are out. This year also when mains are there, some students I was telling, they were still worried. I said that do not worry, you know, go ahead and uh, write, you know, prepare, uh, give, start giving your uh, tests, uh, optional tests, but sir, I will not take test series, I, right now I won't write sir, I will wait until results sir. The results will come 25 days late or 20 days or 25 days or 30 days sometimes. One month is gone, then hurry, in the two months how much can you do? Utilize the full three months between prelims and mains, okay. Chalo then, okay, all the best to all of you.